Welcome to the game room. Today we're going to be discussing a theory for Poppy Playtime called the Living Theory. Before getting into the theory, I'd like to give some context. The game Poppy Playtime first opens with you watching a video, a VHS to be exact. This VHS. You are about to see the most incredible doll ever invented. Her name is Poppy and she is the first truly intelligent doll in the world. A little girl can talk to her? Poppy gives her answers. She is the first doll actually able to have a conversation with a child. Hard to believe? Just watch. Poppy Playtime! Poppy's as lovable as a real girl, and she talks like one too. My name is Poppy. I love you. Can you help me polish my shoes? Why, of course, Poppy. Just like a real girl, Poppy always wants to look her best. Perfect. Thank you. Her hair is sturdy and won't come out when you brush it. And smells just like a Poppy flower. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Poppy? I'm a real girl. Just like you. What's the time? Playtime! And if you've ever wanted to see how all of the nation's favorite toys were created, Playtime Co. is now offering factory tours at just $2.99 a person. An entire hour in the most magical toy factory on Earth. What are you waiting for? Come visit the factory. We can't... The VHS opens with an unknown man introducing a revolutionary doll named Poppy. We are then treated to a fairly mundane commercial. However, the first key moment is when the narrator is discussing Poppy's hair and says, And smells just like a poppy flower. And the reason that this matters so much is because poppy flowers are usually symbolic with sleep, or more specifically with like eternal sleep. In some cultures, they're also symbolic of resurrection. The second thing I will circle back to um, near the end of the video. After the Poppy commercial, we are then greeted with a factory tour commercial, and then it starts to glitch out and shows what looks like a mural of a Poppy flower painted in some kind of underground facility. We are then greeted with a letter that says, everyone thinks the staff disappeared 10 years ago. We're still here. Find the flower. As we first enter the dilapidated toy factory, we come across our first VHS tape is titled Lieth Pierre Closing. Hi, my name is Lieth Pierre, and I'm the head of innovation here at the Playtime Co. Toy Factory. If you're seeing this, then you're trespassing. Yeah, we play this little tape on loop whenever we close the factory for the day. So, trespasser, just to make you aware, while we pride ourselves primarily on our high-quality toys and excellent child care, we also pride ourselves on our security. For example, this facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which, once set off, will turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And that's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. No spoilers. So, you've got my warning. It's not too late to turn around. I just hope that you're certain whatever you're doing is worth it. There are a few insights that we get from this VHS tape. Number one is that Lieth Pierre is the head of innovation for Playtime. Another one is that this is supposed to be played every time the factory is closed, but evidently no one ever closed the factory. The third thing is the visual. We're only given this kind of slight blurry image, looking at it next to an image of Huggy Wuggy, you can tell easily that that is Huggy Wuggy's hand. The next VHS we watch is a orientation video for the Grab Pack. The most notable part of this happens to be the very end.
It's what's inside that's special. This is kind of the start of the theory. Playtime Incorporated is doing something to their toys to make them special. As we make our way through the factory, in the energy room, we can find a poster that says, remember, do, don't. Under the do's, it says, be kind to others, show up on time, not hide behind doors to scare Leith Pierre. Now, we already met Leith in the first VHS tape that we found inside of the toy factory. Well, why would he be afraid? Under the don'ts, we have stay past 8 p.m., misuse company time, tamper with machinery, and enter innovation wing without authorization. We also know that Leith is the head of innovation. We eventually find ourselves in the storage section of the toy factory, where we find our fourth VHS tape. Rich, where are they keeping the huggy boxes? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Remember when maintenance last did a sweep of this place? <laughs> no. Exactly! Nobody in this stupid company knows what they're doing. Oh, I swear, I haven't seen a single box in its place since they started flooding the storehouse with orphanage junk. Right. I get it. It's a nice program and all, on brand, but uh, it's just hard to be happy about it when manufacturing's on our necks about it, because we can't find stupid hockey boxes! Rich. Uh, you're right. You're right. It's, it's for the orphans. I just wish there were less boxes. Anything less would be more habitable. Is, is that even a word? Habitable? This VHS tape is two employees talking, one of which, named Rich, is lamenting the fact that their storage is overrun with all these orphanage boxes. And that's an important fact for our theory. After the storage room, uh, and a few conveyor rooms, we find ourselves inside of a large room with a toy making machine in the center. Here's where we find our fifth tape, and one that kind of sets the thematic stage for Poppy Playtime, and more importantly, this theory. So, Stella, what made you want to work at the Playtime Co. Factory? Playing with toys when I was young was so magical. I could go straight from my bedroom floor to anywhere in the world. It was such a great feeling. And being able to work at a toy factory, somewhere that can provide kids with that same experience... That's a pretty great feeling, too. Sometimes, though, I really, really wish I could go back. To being a kid, I mean. And it's weird, because adults are just kids, but older. I don't think anyone ever really feels like an adult. But your body just gets older and older, and then you die. Poof! <laughs> Human bodies just can't stay young forever. There's things, though. Like some trees that can stay alive even while being way older than a person. I mean, the oldest people to ever live are still younger than those. So I guess everyone is always young relative to something. Right? Alright, I think we're getting a little off track. This tape introduces us to Stella in the middle of a job interview for Playtime Inc. She kind of goes off on a bit of a tangent, uh, talking about age and kind of how no matter what, regardless of you getting older, you'll die, but there are things that last forever, trees and maybe toys, and then the interviewer pulls her back on track. The other notable thing inside of this area is a poster that gives us a little bit more insight into Playtime Inc.'s orphanage program. Specifically, the poster says, the Playtime Co. Foster and Adoptive Care Initiative strives to create permanency in the lives of orphan children by recruiting adoptive and foster parents within our own organization. We encourage all Playtime employees to take part in our mission by fostering or adopting an orphan child. Participating employees may be eligible for additional benefits. This initiative helps children not only in the Midwest region, but also orphans around the world. Every child deserves a chance at a new life. After this area, we are chased through a bunch of conveyor belts and tight hallways by Huggy Wuggy until ultimately we escape him and we come across the sixth and final tape. Final log in relation. Experiment 1006. The prototype. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set, as well as the skill set of all other experiments of his type. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process, which should have under no circumstances been left unaccounted for. That's why I'm making this log. 
so that the same mistake won't be made twice. Any future experiments will need to be contained and disposed of in a secure location. I'm not worried about myself. One breakthrough and I'll be back. We must forge onwards in the name of science. Whether those who are beneath us understand it or not, end of... In this VHS, we're treated to the final log for an unnamed scientist who talks about experiment 1006. We know that 1006 is Huggy Wuggy because when you die in the game, you're treated to one of 10 different messages, one of which is experiment 1006, isn't he wonderful? Obviously relative to Huggy Wuggy. Now the scientist goes on, he also mentions that even if he's gone, it will just take one breakthrough and he'll be back. And at the end of the tape, it sounds very much like Huggy Wuggy or something broke in and cut him off. We don't 100% know the fate of this scientist, but I would say it's fairly safe to say he's gone. But why would he say something like, one more breakthrough and I'll be back? And that brings us to the theory, the living theory. Playtime Incorporated was having its employees adopt orphans to be used to make living toys. There's evidence of this in the storage room, with it overflowing with goods that were meant for the orphans. There's evidence in Pierre's VHS where he talks about how they pride themselves on their child care. The slogan itself, it's what's inside is special, gives hints towards this. But by far the evidence, right in front of our faces, at the beginning, Poppy herself tells you the truth. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Poppy? I'm a real girl, just like you. And if that still wasn't enough to convince you, watch this seventh and final VHS. <laughs>